Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now I'm breaking down to bite-sized pieces. So today, it is uh, Sunday, June 13th, and we've got some pretty great stories. They don't sound so good in the beginning, but uh, I'll get to them and I'll explain why it is massively good. So first up, China's cryptocurrency mining crackdown spreads to Yunnan in southwest China. And this is great news because we're going to see a mass migration of all the different Chinese Bitcoin mining operators move into North America and Europe. So we'll take a look at that on top of the fact that we've also got some more great news as uh, another country falls and they start to ask for Bitcoin. And this is in uh, Africa and Tanzania. So we'll take a look at those two stories. And what I want to talk about real quick is what the heck is going on in the market. So again, it is uh, Sunday, it's 5 p.m. here in El Paso, Texas time. A uh, crisp, cool 106 degrees, <laughs> and here we are. So uh, the market cap, 1.63 trillion. And if you followed yesterday's video, we talked about how was Sunday going to be the day when we were gonna see a massive dip. And everybody was saying that there we were looking to go to this death cross. And uh, one of the few people, uh, CJ and Monty over at Market Rebellion were like, well, we're just going towards that. It doesn't mean that it's going to actually happen, but if the price keeps falling, we're gonna see a cross over the 50 and the 200 day moving average. Well, that did not happen. And uh, everything just seems to magically go in the exact opposite direction of what people think it is. And in the, the video yesterday, I talked about, I said, I don't know what you wanna do here. I mean, if uh, my goals are not your goals. So if some people, we're all talking about selling and uh, they were really scared that uh, Bitcoin's going to go 25,000 and it was going to be really bad. And I just said, look, you know, it's up to you to decide what you want to do. But me personally, and you can watch the video from yesterday, I said, I'm not going to sell. I don't really like to go back and forth. I'm just a long-term investor. I don't really care what happens as far as fluctuations in the market because I've learned the lessons from the past. And the lessons from the past were people who got into crypto and, uh, you know, they sold and, and they were waiting to, to get back in and everything just kind of blew up and they just missed the boat. So I'm like, you know what, I've got my exit strategy and it doesn't involve these short term swings. So I really just don't care. Anyhow, so today uh, it did the exact opposite of what most people thought it would do. And it's now 1.63 trillion. So that's pretty great. And on top of that, we actually talked about not just uh, the death cross. We also talked about uh, the uh, massive amount or more increase or an increase in people who were wanting to short the market. And we took a look at BYBT.com yesterday and it was about 80% <clears throat> people were shorting. And now today, magically, everybody's going long. So uh, what does that mean? Well, it means usually that when you had a lot of people who were going short, and remember the price of Bitcoin was around 30, gosh, 34,000, 35,000. Well, when it starts to go up to 38, 39,000, what are you gonna see? You're gonna see this. And this is over at Trade the Chain. What I like about it is because you can take a look at the uh, wrecked positions, who got wrecked, I'm sorry if you, you were, but you're gonna see a lot of those. Liquidations, liquidations, liquidations. Some of these, like there's Litecoin here, but most of these are uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Chainlink, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. And um, yeah, I mean, if you wanna keep doing that, then that is up to you, but uh, not a good play, I think, for people just looking to get rich doing shorts and whatever else do whatever you want to do so that's what's going on uh, let's take a look at what is up bitcoin is almost at uh, 39,000, and then we got uh, ethereum around 25 i mean everything's uh looking pretty good in 24 hours so exact opposite what we thought uniswap is up seven percent congratulations four percent for litecoin watch out theta token up 10 percent. everything it's a good day it's a great day everybody's happy let's take a look at what's going on let's just get into it shall we so Love these stories. I love these stories as China just says, we want you out of here. Great. Cannot wait to get all these Chinese miners out of China into North America and Europe. So uh, let's just go take a look at what's going on. China's crypto mining crackdown spreads to Yunnan in the Southwest. So just so you know, China accounts for over half of global Bitcoin production, but some miners have been considering moving elsewhere. After the state council, China's cabinet vowed to clamp down on Bitcoin mining and trading last month. The Energy Administration of Yunnan on Friday issued a notice ordering a probe into misappropriation, that's a nice word, and unauthorized use of electricity by Bitcoin miners vowing punishment. A copy of the notice, which sets an end June deadline, was given. 
The probe in Yunnan, China's fourth biggest Bitcoin mining hub, follows restrictions in several other areas. The northwestern province of Qinghai, I think I nailed that, and a district in neighboring Xinjiang, same, have ordered crypto mining projects to close. Inner Mongolia has unveiled measures to route crypto mining, while Sichuan, nailed it, is probably the industry. I'm, I probably butchered all those names. I don't really care. So here's the thing. There's a lot to unpack there. And I know people are screaming at this screen going, but you don't understand all these Bitcoin miners. It's like 80%, 75-80% renewable energy sources. So that's not true. And then you don't understand. It's because miners from all over the world can tap into these big mining distribution centers and they can, you know, individual miners can go to like BTC and uh, uh, Antpool and all these things. And they can go anywhere they want to at any time. Hold on. So let's back up for all these things about uh, how many are being used for renewable sources. 75%, 80%, I guess. And uh, that's at any one given time. And you have to remember that uh, this is information coming out of China, China. So if you think they're given everything the most accurate information, not so Mary Jo. Also, there was a great video, a great video from my friend Guy and his team over there at Coin Bureau. I'm gonna direct you to this video. And he's going to break down it really simply about what's going on. He says, yes, there are a lot of renewable sources that are being used, but that's not every single time on every single week and every single month. Actually, a lot of these uh, miners actually start to move and push forward into uh, the inner parts of China where they use more coal power. And then once, once this coal power is being used, uh, that becomes a little bit more dirty of a situation. So uh, there is that part. Also, when you are, when we're all talking about uh, the mining situation where individuals are like, hey, I can unplug and go anywhere I want to. That's true, you can. But have you seen these mining centers that are being set up in China? It's like rows and rows. It's like hundreds and thousands of different uh, uh, mining rigs that are put all together. So you may be able to tap in as an individual miner in your apartment or your house, or maybe you got a set of five or 10 and you're, and you're, you're, you're setting up to like uh, some of these pools, but they, I believe are like the lion's share. And I can't find any data as to how many exact mining rigs are in each of these warehouses that is all located in China. They're all over there. And uh, one of those, those factors, and Guy talks about in his video, is where there was a flooding of a uh, mining coal plant and it's uh, dropped the hash power of Bitcoin by 30% because the electricity couldn't get to these mining operations. So uh, even if you say that, hey, that, that is what it is. So uh, we'll take a look at that uh, later at your own leisure. And uh, this to me personally, I think is fantastic news and i think it's fantastic news because in all honesty i don't trust china i don't trust anything that's that's going on there and um i just think it's an unsafe situation uh i am a patriot i love america i'm not gonna deceive you by saying anything else i was in the military for eight years and and to me i'm ecstatic that china is making the wrong decision uh the government not the people the government is making the wrong decision by passing on crypto. If they want to pass on crypto because they want the digital yuan and really control all of their citizens, that is their um, that is what they want to do. That's great. Let the 1.6 billion people uh, just get passed over. And that's what they want to do as far as the government. The other 5.25 billion that are still left out there who want cryptocurrency will take it over and will run with that flag. So. Uh, to me, this is awesome. And then even in Guy's video, he talks about how there's just been more and more uh, these mining operations who are moving uh, their operations over to Europe and North America or inquiring about it because they're going to get shut down in China. I, can't, I don't know how it's a, it's a very simple way to think of these, these types of things. And then I also believe that um, these Chinese miners to move thousands and thousands uh, of, of mining rigs and open up a new warehouse and open up a new infrastructure and everything else takes a lot of money. And where are they going to get that money? Well, they mine Bitcoin. So they would probably sell that Bitcoin to fund their operations to move to uh, a West Texas, to move to a Canada, to move to uh, Central Europe, Kazakhstan or whatever, uh, to start up their mining operations. So to me, I think this is just short-term pain, which will lead to 
long-term gain. And I, for one, am extremely excited that this is happening. And I'm happy that this is going to move out of China and actually become a more stable infrastructure for uh, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain and the whole network as a whole. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And uh, let's move on to our next piece. And this is also great news. Um, we did a video a couple of days ago, and I called it first of many. And this was actually four days ago. And this is when we talked about uh, El Salvador and uh, what was going on uh, with the president coming in and saying, hey, we're going to use Bitcoin as legal tender. I thought, well, this is in Central America. It should spread pretty fast. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to spread to Africa, but here we are. Uh, but I said it was first of many. And this is just one more country who's like, you know what? Crypto is the right way to go. So this is president of uh, uh, Tanzania calls on the central bank to prepare for the use of cryptocurrency. And she states, we have witnessed the emergence of new journeys through the internet. My call to the central bank is to start working on that development. So no, it it, it is true that these central banks are still going to fight tooth and nail. And they do not want to have cryptocurrency uh, come in and, and eat up what they're doing. But I see a lot of governments, a lot of different countries, and they're all looking at it a little bit more uh, differently. I think they know that this is the future and they see the writing on the wall. So they want to allow this to come in. And one of the projects that is really working to these third world countries, I have to say it again, is... Uh, Cardano. So with Cardano, um, you've got projects like uh, World Mobile Token, WMT, where over on Dan Clips, Digital Asset News Clips, it's my second channel. And what we do over there is we highlight some more of these different projects that uh, are up and coming. I don't like to do it on Digital Asset News because this is just for the news channel. So we talked about World Mobile Token. They are about to have their token generation event. And what they are doing is they are uh, putting uh, in infrastructure, see these little air nodes, that's what gives uh, telecommunications and mobile service to these villages in Sub-Saharan Africa. They've already done it, guess where? Tanzania. And uh, that's the first part. They're also uh, putting in um, these solar panels so that they can uh, actually power the service of uh, these telecommunication towers or this mesh and on top of that if they uh, which they will with which they when they produce excess of power excess power they can either sell that power or they can uh, run the entire village and this is what world mobile token is doing as far as the first part of infrastructure the second part is using world mobile token which is built on the cardano blockchain to provide digital id to provide payments to provide finance to provide healthcare to provide recording of, of different assets and, and properties and uh, land and all those, all those great things. So um, I see this all kind of coming together. Uh, I just think it's great news. And that's why uh, over on Dan Clips, we're trying to get these uh, Cardano projects, which will are all either ready to launch, have launched a little bit, or are going to do a heavy launch in August when the smart contracts, uh, the Alonzo integration goes uh, live. So that's why we are doing those. We've already talked about World Mobile Token, uh, Charlie, which is the Oracle, uh, Indigo Protocol, and we just did one, which I thought was a really good one with my friend Hashoshi, uh, YouTube Hashoshi. Uh, we took a look at uh, Card Starter, which is a launch pad. So uh, you can check those out. I'll link Dan Clips. Dan Clips, all you gotta do is just digital asset news clips in YouTube and it'll, it'll pop up. This will come pop up. This I even put this in a, um, a playlist so you can find it uh, quite easily. But um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think uh, these are good days. So I just wanted to give uh, everybody a, a quick heads up of what is going on. The real question, though, <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> just to make sure everybody knows, I always look up things, is uh, Tanzania uh, right here in the uh, uh, middle part of Africa. The next question really is, is which ones in the next countries to fall where they start to say, you know what, we want to use Bitcoin. We want to use a, a Ethereum. We want to use a Cardano. We want to use a tomato coin, whatever they want to use because they see the writing on the wall of what cryptocurrency is. I think in a lot of these places, the banks just passed them over because they're unbanked and un underserved and it didn't really work out because the banks just didn't really want to really get in there because it wasn't cost effective. They're going to bypass all the years that we had with the banks and they're just going to leap over to blockchain. And that's why I think Cardano is doing the right thing uh, to get into Africa because that's the next big one. And um Lastly, I'll just say this, uh, the CEO of Paxful came out and said that uh, as far as peer-to-peer, -peer, 
the most people using Bitcoin peer-to-peer uh, -peer wise is in Africa. Let that sink in. All right, so <laughs> that's it for today. Just give that quick update. I'll link Guy's video in the description. If you like that video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are very time sensitive, so consider subscribing. Also follow us at uh, uh, Twitter on News Asset. Uh, a lot of things we talk about, we talk about those things first over on Twitter, then we bring it into YouTube. So uh, that is it for today. Thanks so much, I appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.